We want to welcome everyone to Holy Cross live stream worship remote on this uh, fourth Sunday of Easter. We hope that you're all doing well and we're glad that you logged in. And now as we've uh, come together for this time of worship, uh, let us pray. He Heavenly Father, we do indeed uh, give uh, great thanks uh, for our risen Lord uh, and the hope that is ours because he is the first fruits of those who will sleep and uh, it's a wonderful thing, even in our own tradition, uh, that we get to, to celebrate uh, Easter, not just on one day, uh, but for an entire season. And so we continue to uh, revel in the truth of the resurrection and its application to our own lives. And so as we come to this uh, uh, service of worship, uh, we pray, Lord, that you might um, um, remove any distraction that might keep us from doing what we've set out to do in this next hour and that uh, you would have our full attention uh, and that we would hear you as you speak through your word, uh, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit as we pray and as we sing, and that everything that we do in this next hour might be to the furtherance of your glory and to our soul's health. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the end of thy love Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mind would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as you choose. myself and I will be ever only of thee. Take myself and I will be ever only of thee. Take myself and I will be Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who, who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. With you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Acts. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done by a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed? Let it be known to all of you and to all of the, the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. That portion of the Psalter appointed for this day is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul. He guides me along right pathways for his namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from 1 John. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth, and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. The word of the Lord. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. And Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. 
I know mine own and mine own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. And so there will be one flock and one shepherd. And for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of mine own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to take that as my text this morning from John's Gospel, chapter 10, and beginning at verse 11. If you have a New Testament handy, I want to encourage you to turn there. John, chapter 10, and beginning at verse 11. And this morning I want to talk about when the Good Shepherd becomes my shepherd. When the Good Shepherd becomes my shepherd. Of course, it was King David who famously said that the Lord, Yahweh, is his shepherd. And here in our text this morning, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. It, it might be pointed out even as we begin that uh, Jesus isn't the good shepherd to, to everyone. Indeed, in this same Gospel of John in the 10th chapter and verse 25, this is what Jesus says to his detractors, his enemies, those who are always trying to catch him up. He said this, you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. And so Jesus is the good shepherd, but he isn't in point of fact the good shepherd to everyone. But what happens when he is? What happens when the good shepherd becomes my shepherd? Well, Jesus mentions no less than two things in our text. And the first is this, that when Jesus, that when Jesus, indeed, when Jesus, the good shepherd, becomes my shepherd, I become the object of his sacrificial love. I become the object of his sacrificial love. Indeed, notice again, beginning at verse 11. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, and who does not own the sheep, he sees a wolf coming, a threat, a predator, and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. He that is the hired hand flees because he is a hired hand. And cares nothing for the sheep. And then picking up in verse 17. And for this reason, the Father that is God, the Father, he loves me, Jesus says. Because I laid down my life that I might take it up again. No one takes it from me, Jesus says. But I lay it down of mine own accord. I have authority, that is power, to, to lay it down. And I have authority or power to take it up again. And this charge I have received of my father and so jesus says that he is the the good shepherd this is one of the famous i am statements as we have them in the gospel of john there's seven of them all together for instance in chapter six jesus says i i am the bread of life in chapter eight jesus says i'm the light of the world in chapter 11 jesus says i'm the resurrection of the in the life and then in chapter 15 jesus says, I'm the true vine, etc. There And there are others. And here in chapter 10, in our text, Jesus says, and I am the good shepherd. And of course, all of these I am statements, Jesus saying that he's bread and that he's light and, and so on, uh, for, for the most part are, are metaphors, as is here. Jesus never sh shepherded any sheep, so far as I know. He was a carpenter with his father in the Galilee. Uh, but, but here he's speaking metaphorically that he is uh, the good shepherd. And, and this, uh, the metaphor of the shepherd is a, is a vivid one because shepherding was a major occupation in Palestine in Jesus's day. And so even if not everyone who was listening to Jesus when he said these things understood the primary point that Jesus was making, they at least understood what he was saying about shepherds themselves. 
indeed, to Jesus' listeners would have understood uh, what Merrill Tenney says about shepherds in his commentary on the Gospel of John, namely uh, that shepherding uh, involves both uh, protective concern and an attitude of self-sacrifice, that shepherding involved both a protective concern and an attitude of self-sacrifice. And this was especially true given the predators that existed in Palestine in Jesus' own day. There were wolves and even lions and bears, which Jesus mentions here, even in our own text, when he mentions the wolf. And Jesus says that he is the good shepherd who sacrifices his life for the good of the sheep. Indeed, the sheep, that is his followers, and that's what sheep do, by the way. They they follow the shepherd. That's sort of an interesting thing. With cattle, you drive them from behind. Uh, but when you're dealing with sheep, you you go before them and you lead them and you call them by name. But and and they follow. You don't drive them from behind, uh, but you lead them, and they follow. Uh, and 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 uh, his pr primary concern as the shepherd is them. Uh, indeed, the, the well-being uh, of the sheep uh, to the shepherd, to a true shepherd, uh, is of greater concern to him than even his own well-being, even as Jesus de describes it here. Uh, Eugene Peterson, uh, in his paraphrase, the message, put it this way. The good shepherd puts the sheep before himself. And why is that? Well, that, that's because the good shepherd loves the sheep. Indeed, in one of uh, John's other writings, in his letter, his first letter, uh, in First uh, John, in chapter 3, and verse 16, this is what John writes. And by this we know love. By this we understand it. We see it modeled before us. We know love because he laid down his life for us. Indeed, Jesus, uh, the good shepherd, isn't like the hireling. Uh, someone who, a hireling, a hired hand who is uh, uh, paid to temporarily look after the sheep. Indeed, the, the hireling uh, looks after the sheep uh, for money. Uh, the, the hireling uh, uh, is shepherding, and, and to him, it's just a, a business opportunity. Uh, he doesn't, as Jesus says in our text, actually care for the sheep. The sheep uh, are to him just a, a means to another end. And so, as Jesus puts it, uh, when the hireling sees the wolf coming and the well-being of the sheep are threatened and even his own life is threatened, uh, the hireling, he abandons the sheep and he runs for cover uh, because uh, his first priority and his primary concern as a pastor who would only pastor the sheep <laughs> uh, only for money his primary concern is himself. And so with the hireling in charge, the wolf comes and he destroys some of the sheep and then he scatters the rest. And Jesus says this happens because the hireling cares nothing ultimately for the sheep. But when Jesus, the good shepherd, is my shepherd, I become an object of his sacrificial love. When you, when he becomes your shepherd, <laughs> you become an object of his sacrificial love. Indeed, he will not allow anything to come between you and him, uh, even if he should have to die to see you safe, which, by the way, is exactly what he did, didn't he? And so we read in the scriptures, Romans 5 and verse 8, and God shows his love for us. And while that we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Or as Brennan Manning famously put it, God loves you so much he'd rather die than live without you. And Jesus says that God the Father loves him because he sacrifices his life and more. Indeed, notice again our text. And at, at verses 17 and 18, and Jesus says, for this reason, the father, his father, loves me, he says, because I laid down my life that I might take it up again. 
And then he says something interesting. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of mine own accord. I have authority or power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. And this charge to lay it down and to take it up again, I have received from the Father. In fact, earlier, what? In the Gospel of John in chapter three, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But the Father gives the son and the son allows himself to be given uh, willingly and voluntarily. Indeed, uh, Jesus sacrifices himself voluntarily. And not even that, not just that, but what we might say deliberately. Indeed, Jesus' death wasn't a mistake. Uh, he didn't die as some sort of a powerless victim, nor even uh, as a martyr dying for what he believed in, uh, all the while wishing that he might have lived longer. Rather, Jesus' death is in keeping with the divine intent. And so we read uh, even in this same Gospel of John in chapter 19, an interesting uh, bit of interaction between the Roman governor Pilate and Jesus. But in uh, John 19 and beginning at verse 10, we read, and Pilate said to Jesus when uh, Jesus was on trial before Pilate, Pilate said to Jesus, Do, don't you know that I have authority or power to release you and, and power to crucify you? And then in verse 11, Jesus replies, you wouldn't have any authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above, unless it had been given to you <laughs> from God. And so Jesus' death was in keeping with the divine intent, as was his resurrection, by the way. And so we read um, in uh, Acts chapter 2 in the uh, uh, Peter's famous uh, Pentecost sermon. And this is what he says. And he said many things, but this is one of the things that he said in Acts chapter 2 and beginning at verse 23. And this Jesus, and notice the description, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. What happened to Jesus was all according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. And he said, Peter says to the people to whom he's speaking, they're in the, in the uh, temple precincts. This Jesus you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. But God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it, to be held by death. And so that's the first thing. When the good shepherd becomes my shepherd, I become the object of his self-sacrificing love. And then secondly, when the good shepherd becomes my shepherd, I come to know him and he knows me. Notice again uh, at verse uh, 14, indeed 14 through 16. Jesus says, and I am the good shepherd, the shepherd of blessing and benefit. I am the good shepherd and I know mine own and my own know me just as the father knows me. And I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold, and I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. And so there will be one flock and one shepherd. What Jesus is talking about in that first, first part of, of, of that section from John chapter 10 is, is, is spiritual intimacy. He's not just, uh, when he says that uh, I know mine own and mine own know me, he's not just talking about mutual intellectual uh, uh, awareness, uh, but rather uh, mutual knowledge in the, in the biblical sense, which often refers to so much more uh, than just intellectual awareness, but, but intimacy, uh, knowledge that is uh, of, uh, of someone else uh, that is intimate. And Jesus mentioning the relationship that, that exists between him and God the Father makes this abundantly clear. Notice again verse 14 and then and, and into verse 15. And I know mine own and, mine own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. That the, the, the relationship that exists between Jesus and the Father is an ex extraordinary one. 
a, a, an intimate one. And Jesus says that the relationship between him and the sheep is just the same. And, and then Jesus said, oh, oh, indicates that he wasn't just talking about uh, the Jewish sheep or, or his Jewish followers, the, those who were following him even as he was speaking, uh, but prior to his passion, uh, uh, those who were his, uh, his sheep at the time, but also sheep that were already his, uh, but, that, but hadn't yet been called, uh, hadn't yet been gathered by him. Sheep not of the fold that he was pastoring at the time, if you will, but sheep that would be added to his flock, uh, resulting, Jesus says, in one unified uh, flock uh, under the lordship of one shepherd, what, namely him, the, the good shepherd. Sheep that when Jesus calls them, uh, they will hear his voice. And when they hear his vo voice, they answer his call. Indeed, Jesus says in another place, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. And who are the chosen? The chosen are those who answer that call. And so when we come to, when we come to the 17th chapter of John, often uh, called uh, the, 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 the chapter of the high priestly prayer of Jesus, where he, he prays for the flock that he was pastoring then, nam namely uh, the disciples. And then he extends his prayer to include those who would become a part of his flock through the ministry of the apostles. But this is what we read in John 17, beginning at verse 20. He, and he says to God the Father, and I do not ask only for these, Peter, James, and John, and, and so on, but I also pray for those who will believe in me through their word, through their ministry. Verse 21, that they all, both the flock that I have now and the flock that I will seek very soon in the in the near future and jo join them all together so that they all may be one just as you father this is a prayer just as you father are in me and i in you that they also may be in us and so the same spiritual intimacy and union that exists between jesus and his father is extended uh, to the disciples that were with Jesus prior to his passion and those that he would add to his flock as the days went on, as Jesus says, who would be added through the ministry of his apostles. In fact, uh, we get to, uh, information relative to that in, in the Great Commission. In, in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus, after the resurrection and prior to his ascension, he, he told that original flock, he told uh, his apostles, he said in there, he said, and therefore go and make disciples of all nations, not just in Israel, not just amongst the Jews, not just like Jews like us, but go and make disciples of all nations, Gentiles like I am. <laughs> and perhaps for the most part, you are. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always as you're doing this, even to the end of the age. Or in Acts chapter one, after his resurrection and prior to his ascension, he said to the same group, to Peter, James, and John, and Bartholomew, and Philip, and Andrew, and all the rest of them, he said, but you will receive power on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. What? To go and collect that additional flock that it might be added to the flock as it existed even in the apostles' day uh, prior to Jesus' ascension and prior to the coming of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. I read recently something that Basil the Great, uh, the Bishop of Cappadocian Caesarea, something that he wrote in the mid fourth century. He wrote this, he said, oh man, what should we do with you? When God remains in the heights, you do not seek him. And when he comes down and converses with you in human flesh, 
you do not receive him. And yet Jesus himself, who is God come to us in the flesh, Jesus, the good shepherd, he says in the Gospel of John, all that the Father gives to me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. And then again, even in this 10th chapter of John, Jesus says, and my sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. And so I wonder this morning, do you hear him calling you by name? And if you do, will you follow him with all of your heart? When the good shepherd becomes my shepherd, let us pray. It's an extraordinary thing to think that we are dust and unto dust we shall return. <laughs> that, we, that we come and we go, we're born and we die. And yet um, in all of our weakness, even in all of our sin from which we are in need of forgiveness and about which you are more aware than even we are, Father. You love us. Yahweh, you are our shepherd. And Jesus is our shepherd, the good shepherd. And you love us. And you proved it through Jesus. He was willing to pay the ultimate price, giving everything that he had that he might reach us and solve our problem, solve our sin problem, its power uh, and the judgment due to it. We pray, Lord, uh, that you would move in our hearts and that this wouldn't be just something, oh, here we are again, Jesus, the good shepherd, I've heard it so many times, but that we would hear it in a new, a fresh way, that we would hear it and that it would have a, a transforming power. Uh, in our hearts and in our lives, so that we would hear the voice of the Son and respond to it and follow, even as we prayed earlier in this service. And this we pray in his name. Amen. And now let us continue with our worship and our recitation of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. 
Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the faithful departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we continue, Lord, in our prayers for our brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted because of their faith in your son, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, for those who persecute them. We pray, Lord, for Lucy, for John, for Elaine, for Christopher and Anne, Carrie and Susie. We pray, Lord, for Johnny, Jacob and Jesse, for Randy and Carolyn for Carleen and Larry, for Andrew, David, Christy, Abby and Grace. We pray for Al, Bob and Kitty, for Andy, Olivia, for Michael and Alex. We pray, Lord, for Harry. We pray, Lord, for Dan, for Brian, Shelley, Clayton, and Connor, for Jesse, and for Christine, and for Jim, we pray, Lord, for Alyssa. We pray, Linda, we pray for Linda. We pray for Janet, for Lois, Lance, and Kara, for Ludmilla, and for Andrew and Marvin. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Good morning. We want to know that you're worshiping with us. Be sure to say hello in the comments on Facebook or send an email with the message watching and the names of those in your family who are viewing to Carrie Richardson. That's K-A-R-I at HolyCrossChurch.com to let us know you're here. Holy Cross Children is embarking on an epic quest through hidden ruins, ancient caves, and dense jungles this summer. At Treasured VBS, preschool and elementary kids will dig into action-packed, faith-filled adventures. They'll discover God's greatest treasure isn't diamonds, gems, or gold. It's them. Our hybrid program runs July 12th through the 16th with both in-person and online options. So be ready to register your family next Sunday, May 2nd. We can't wait to help your kids discover that they are treasured by God. Holy Cross Kids Preschool is excited to announce summer camp for preschoolers this June. Especially for two and a half to five-year-olds, camp days will be filled with games, crafts, music, and fun. We have two weeks of camp to choose from, each with its own special theme, Get more information and register online at holycrosskids.org or email me, Jessica Nelson, at hckids at holycrosschurch.com. Holy Cross Youth kicked off a new study in the book of Nehemiah last Wednesday night on Zoom, so it's the perfect time to join them. Zooms are every Wednesday at 7 p.m. So if you have or know of a student that's in 6th through 12th grade, that wants to grow closer to God and with other like-minded students, email the youth director for more information at adam at holycrosschurch.com. 
Have you been to the Holy Cross Women's Finding I Am Bible Study? We are learning the seven I Am statements of Jesus from the Gospel of John. If you missed any of these Thursday night chats, no worries. This study is made to join in anytime. Teacher, author, Lisa Turkhurst presents this study on the streets of Israel at the very places that Jesus said his I Am statements. Zoom with the rest of the Holy Cross women as we grow closer to Jesus on Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. Get the Zoom link and other information in the Holy Cross women weekly emails. See you Thursday. Holy Cross Men meets on Saturdays via Zoom from 8 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. Each Zoom features fellowship, Bible study, and group discussion. Our next meeting is this Saturday, May 1st, so click the link in your weekly prompt and see you then. Holy Cross meets for in-person abbreviated Eucharist at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Seating is limited and reservations are required. Watch your email for the registration link or access it using your Breeze profile online or in the app. The reservation deadline is 7 p.m. on Thursdays. Contact us at www.holycrosschurch.com for more information. If you would like to receive information on any of the opportunities you've heard about today, be sure to note your interest on the electronic connection card found on our Facebook page in the YouTube description box or on our website www.holycrosschurch.com. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We hope you have a wonderful week. Long after the tears fall I'm still your child Put down my defenses Lay down my pride Love and forgiveness Flow deep and wide So I'll run to you And surrender all As I lay down my life And pick up my cross And what a joy it is to give my life away to you All that I need All that I seek Is you here with me Holy Spirit Have your way in me In times of trouble trials may come. The rock of ages is standing strong. I'm fighting battles, but the war is won, so I'll run to you. And surrender all as I lay down my life, and pick up my cross, and what a joy it is. To give my life away to you All that I need All that I seek Is you here with me Holy Spirit Have your way in me More of you And less of me God of me, God, more of you, and less of me, God, more of you, overflowing, as I lay down my life, and pick up my cross, what a joy it is to give my life away to you. Spirit, have your way in me.
the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. And so go in peace. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, let each one of us seek to be a benefit and a blessing to everyone we meet as we seek also to be ever growing in love in our relationship with God and our relationship with one another and in our relationship with the world around us. Alleluia. Hallelujah.